Gold standard to evaluate any obstruction of the nasal pathway is. Now, any obstruction in the nasal pathway is going to cause a shift from nasal breathing, okay, to mouth breathing or oral breathing, okay. So, nasal breathing is the normal type of respiration that is usually seen. But if there is any obstruction to the flow of air through the nasal passages, then an adaptive mechanism of the in individual would be to breathe through the mouth. Now, there are many reasons why there can be obstruction of the nasal cavity. These could be because of certain developmental problems or any pathology, okay, or they can be intermittent problems such as allergic rhinitis. Okay, in case a person has uh, allergies which can bring about uh, proliferation of the blood vessels of the nasal mucosa which brings about obstruction of the nasal passage. Okay, or certain other uh, uh, features such as deviated nasal septum, nasal polyps, okay, enlarged turbinates or enlarged tonsils and adenoids. Okay, so there can be a wide variety of reasons because of which there can be obstruction of the nasal passages. So there are various tests which have been identified in order to assess uh, whether the breathing that is taking place is through the mouth or through the nasal passages. Okay, so some of the clinical tests that are mentioned or that are usually carried out are firstly visual examination. So, in the visual examination, the size, shape and activity of the external nares are observed. Okay, for example, now this row shows a patient during inspiration. Okay, and this row shows a patient during expiration. Now, if you observe the size of the external nares, okay, in figure A and in figure B, okay, the size of the nares remains the same. Whereas, if you see in figure C, where the patient is inspiring, the size of the nares actually increase during inspiration and then reduce during expiration. So, this shows us that this patient is a mouth breather, okay. This is why there is no change in the size and shape of the external nares during inspiration or expiration. Whereas, this is a patient who has uh, the tendency to breathe through the nose or is a nasal breather. So, during inspiration, there will be increased in the size of the uh, external nares so that increased amount of air can pass through, right? So, this is the visual method. Then is the mirror test, okay? Uh, and other clinical tests such as the butterfly test and the water holding test. Now, the mirror test is basically a very simple clinical test that can be done to identify whether the uh, respiration is taking place from the nose or from the mouth. So, in this, a double-sided mirror is placed between the nose and the mouth, okay, or the upper lip, and where whichever area of the mi mirror is going to get fogged, okay, or where whichever side the fogging is seen is the side from which the respiration is taking place. So, if the upper side of the mirror is showing fogging, this means the respiration is nasal. But if the lower side of the mirror is getting fogged, this means the respiration is oral. Okay, so this is one of the clinical tests that can be done. The second clinical test that can be done is the butterfly cotton test. Butterfly cotton test. Now, in this, a wisp of cotton is placed over the upper lips. Okay, and if the breathing is taking place through the nasal passage, it will cause a change in the position of the uh, cotton because it's going to move away by the force of air. So, what you see here in figure C, okay, is that the cotton on one side has been displaced or moved from its position here, okay. So, this shows that one nostril is open but the other nostril is closed. Now, this should not be misinterpreted as a pathology or an obstruction. This is something that is normal that takes place because the nasal mucosa, which is highly vascular, undergoes cyclical engorgement of the blood vessels and cyclical shrinkage. So, this cycle takes place between the two nostrils. So, you uh, on, an, uh, on a daily basis, one nostril is going to be clear and the other nostril is going to be somewhat obstructed and then the cycle again shifts to uh, 
the one that was obstructed will become clear and the one that was clear will start becoming obstructed so this is a normal cycle that takes place in the vasculature of the nasal mucosa so this again should not be misinterpreted this is the butterfly cotton test if the patient is uh, not a nasal breather at all then none of the wisps are going to move okay so that will tell you that the respiration is taking place through the oral cavity rather than through the nose okay but of all of these clinical tests okay they are all helpful in their own way but the gold standard for evaluating whether the patient is breathing through the mouth or whether the patient is breathing through the nose so the only reliable method to quantify the amount of air that is passing through the nose and through the mouth is by doing something known as rhino manometry okay so in this test what is done is uh, uh uh, an appliance is placed over the uh, mouth and the uh, nose of the subject okay or his head is going to be enclosed in this plexiglass chamber as you can see in this image b here okay so the entire head is going to be enclosed inside this chamber and there are going to be apparatus which are going to measure the amount of air flow which, are, which is passing through the nose and which is passing through the mouth so this is actually going to give us a quantifiable measurement that the amount of air that is passing through the nose and the amount of air that is passing through the mouth and this will help us to identify whether there is nasal breathing or there is oral breathing that takes place this rhinometric examination okay that measures two things it measures the air flow okay and it also measures the resistance to the flow okay so normally the nasal resistance that is seen in healthy children is about 0.36 plus or minus 0.21 pascal per centimeter cube per second okay so if the nasal resistance increases this shows that there is some amount of nasal obstruction and the patient will uh, ultimately start breathing through this mouth if this nasal obstruction is not cleared okay so this is the gold standard for evaluating so here we were asked the gold standard to evaluate obstruction of the nasal pathway so although all these clinical tests that is the mirror test the butterfly test and checking the size of the nostril helps us to come to some diagnosis but the gold standard for evaluation is one that is going to give us accurate quantitative measurements which can only be achieved by rhino manometry